All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh with Wrights Woodworks, and today we're going to go over the control panel, the touchscreen control panel on the Hydra 9 from One Laser. Let's check it out. Let's turn it on first. The screen's going to load up here in just a second, and it's going to come up with a prompt um, and ask you if you want to actually home the machine. There it goes, because the laser hasn't moved yet. Unlike some other lasers, when you turn it on, it starts moving it automatically. So it gives you a prompt to make sure you want everything's out of the way and that you can move it safely without damaging the laser. So we'll go ahead and confirm and move. The laser is going to go to its home origin position and get ready. In just a second, you're going to hear all some all the fans start to kick on. Uh, not necessarily your exhaust fan, but the, uh, the fans that keep the cabinet cool, the components, the power sources, and stuff like that. All right, the first thing we're going to go over is the, the home screen here. Uh, normally, if you're running a job, it'll have an image here, uh, along with some of your um, settings. Um, speed, power, time, etc. on this home screen. We're not, we don't have a, uh, a file loaded right now, so... We won't see that. The first thing you're going to see manual. This is where you can actually jog this machine. Um, what's cool about this control panel is you can set increments just like you can in light burn uh, to move it. So in order to move it, it doesn't move right now because it's all locked. So you have to hit the unlock button. And now you're free to move. I have it set at 10 millimeters per jog or tap. You could change that by touching if say I want to move it 12 millimeters or one millimeter increments, you could do that and just jog over one millimeter at a time. Another cool feature is you can set the speed at which it moves here. You can set it to a high or you can set it to a low. I have both at the same right now, um, but in order to toggle back and forth, you can hit this. It's currently set on high. You can set that to low or you can set it to high. So if you have it low and you set your increment to move at you know, 10 millimeters a second on low, that's what it will do. So you're able to jog all over the bed with that and also your Z up and down here as well. Okay. The next function is file. Obviously, if you've loaded files into the system uh, through Lightburn or you sent uh, files to the controller to run the job, these are some stuff from the factory. Remember, this is a prototype machine, so there's already some stuff loaded in that they were testing on at the facility. Menu option. So you have obviously language. You could choose your language there. Um, internet, if you want to set up an IP address to send uh, your files or run the laser via Wi-Fi. Uh, next is diagnostics. Uh, you could see uh, different things that may be wrong, whether it's uh, lid protection, your limit switches on the X and Y axis, um, also on the Z upper and bottom. Uh, if you don't have air, if your water's messed up, if you're not cooling correctly, lid protection. I currently have my lid protection off so I can show, you know, film videos and stuff like that. Um, and some other stuff uh, regarding the temperatures of the tubes, the RF tube. Next is U-Disk for loading some files via the USB port. Uh, next is the external devices, which is kind of cool. Um, we'll go over this in another video, but you could set this if your uh, air pump and exhaust fan are hooked into the back of the machine, you could set your air pump and exhaust to start, say, right now it's set to 15 seconds before the job actually starts working on the laser. The, before the laser fires. Um, you can also have the air pump end seven seconds after or any amount of time. It's currently set to seven seconds. So your air is going to blow for seven seconds after the completion of the, the job. Also, you can set your exhaust fan. Um, right now it's set to 15 seconds. Obviously, we don't want the exhaust fan turning off the second the laser turns off or ends its job because there's still going to be fumes underneath the bed or, sorry, exhaust or smoke that needs to be exhausted out um, after the job is done. So we want to keep that running for just a few seconds after. You could turn this off if you'd like. Right now, it's the intelligent mode is on. 
so that these uh, timing functions are in place. Lamp, which is kind of cool. You, if you see over here, right now we're set, the, the lamp is the lights in the laser bed. You can set it to 80, you can see it moving. 20%, 40%, 60, 80, or completely off. Back on 100, kind of cool. If you wanted for filming and stuff like that, that's kind of fun. Um, next is alignment, another cool feature. So, obviously you need to move your um, laser head around on the bed to do your proper alignment. You have the upper left, you can move it, it automatically moves. Center, upper right which is also cool. You can set your power in which you want to pulse. Here's your pulse button. And another cool feature is you can switch back and forth between laser one and laser two. Um, this is a dual source laser, which means it has a 38 watt RF tube and also the 100 watt glass tube in this Hydra 9 model. Uh, if I hit this, um, the mirrors are gonna do a little shimmy shake back there and switch around for um, whatever laser source I choose. Right now, laser one is the glass CO2 tube in the back. Laser two would be the RF tube, which is located on the left-hand side of the machine. Obviously your pulse button here, and you have some other options um, for your pulse time, your red dot pointer, and you can power off the red light when door is open. Not sure why, but it's available. Axis reset, you can reset your axis. Don't know why you need to do that and all sorts of different things. You can set origins, say you have some jigs you're working with, you have three different uh, settings you can use. Um, say if you have a jig for keychains or a jig for slate coasters, you can set each of those um, in here and automatically send the machine to that uh, position every time. That feature is also available in Lightburn under the move function. Um, you can set different origins as well, but this is right here in the controller. Factory backup, factory reset, I'm not messing around with those. System info just shows the controller version um, and stuff like that, HMI version, which is your uh, visual screen here. If we want to go back, factory settings, format, etc. Some things that you don't, you need a password to protect. I know the password, but we're not going to mess around with that today. Okay, back out to the main screen. We were in menu, now we go to autofocus. You, if you have your uh, material on there, all you have to set is hit is OK. Goes down and does your autofocus for you. I don't have any material in the bed currently. So I am going to cancel that. The next is origin. You can set your, that's your origin screen. And frame is also available if a job is loaded into the machine. Currently we do not have one. Probably should have done that before I started this video. But hey, I just wanted to show you guys um, the awesome display here. Um, I know the other models will have the same exact controller screen. The XT desktop and XRF desktop is a little bit different, but same concept. Overall, super impressed, super bright, uh, easy to read no lag or latency in the in the buttons i mean you can move it up and down it's fast very responsive um and anything you want to do i'm impressed if you have any questions please reach out comment like below subscribe more videos coming soon appreciate you guys thank you so much have a good day